Hi, I'm Srilata, a poet and a professor of literature at IIT Madras, where I also teach creative writing. Many thanks to Prajna for inviting me to this very important event, an event I feel a great deal of solidarity with, always have. For me, as a woman, poetry is where I have articulated my thoughts about gender, my place in this world. Though I wasn't always conscious of this, I was writing about gender in writing about myself, my world, the worlds of my mother, my daughter, and other women I have met. The poems I'm going to be reading to you today are mostly from this collection, The Unmistakable Presence of Absent Humans, published by Poetry Wala Mumbai in 2019. This is a book. Um, all, all the poems that I'll be reading to you today allude to the four good words, justice, liberty, equality, fraternity. And I'll leave it to you to figure out just how they do that. In their own ways though, they ask the questions, what does it mean to be a girl, a woman today? How does one reach for what the constitution promises us? Where's the gap? I'll begin by reading to you my poem, A Woman of Letters. It's a poem about the kind of woman I would like to be, have always dreamt of being. A Woman of Letters. Some days, what I want to be is a woman of letters. To retire to my study and be solitary. I can see it all. That desk, neat, rectangular, coffee brown. Its drawers, seductive and deep, holding secrets from another age. On it, some paper, a pen, and an inkwell and a bookcase filled with every kind of book. Austin, definitely, and Dickinson and Chukpal. No adolescent daughters abandoning dresses in contemptuous heaps. No grubby sons, the dirty socks like bombs under my books. No spouses, no mothers, nor mothers-in-law with their urgent thoughts. Sometimes all I want to be is a woman of letters. Between chores, the very idea makes me want to weep. My next poem is um, called Boxes Have That Effect. So I have a small collection of earrings which I used to store in different sorts of boxes. Some of them handcrafted, some just ordinary plastic boxes and so on. And um, one of one evening, I was looking at this, uh, looking at this collection and looking at the boxes, and I began to think about the larger boxes in which all of us as women are placed. So this poem comes from that. <clears throat> boxes have that effect. All evening, I have been considering boxes, handcrafted ones, compelling and impractical, the sort that jam easily. I drop my earrings into one of them, its bluebird shimmer gone before you know it. I've lived in them all my life, boxes in which I have become with a dangerous degree of precision, this, that, the other, or etc. I've noted the contents of their insides. Not bad boxes to be in, and yet I've clawed at their lids like some death row prison. This one is called Not in the Picture. It's a long uh, poem, a poem very close to my heart. And it's partly a reflection on the sorts of violence, gender violence that begins right at the time of birth, the kinds of things, awful things that happen to our female babies, uh, the ways in which certain kinds of women are, you know, women who do not fit 
a picture can never be part of the picture. So it's called not in the picture. <clears throat> Adoption agency file, her first photograph. The only one in the file. Passport size, taken at age 11 months. Studio backdrop, faded orange and dust you can smell. There is no prior story. Nothing before the orange and the dust, except a thick sky of blankness. Why didn't they do more than follow procedure? Why didn't they do more than stick a bottle of milk into her tiny seeking mouth? Why didn't they do more than wrap a towel around her elfin thin body? I'm greedy. I want something larger than orange and dust. I want a sky filled with fluffy white clouds. I'm greedy for some infant cuteness. I want pictures of the day they found her. Glossy, flattering ones I can enlarge. Slide into albums, design coffee mugs out of. Seal into her life and mine. Didn't they have a bloody camera? Now, what will I tell? What did I look like as a baby, Amma? Why are there no photographs of me as a little baby, Amma? Maybe they didn't have a camera, love. Or maybe they did, but someone dropped it and it shattered into a million pieces. But they could have stuck it back together. That's not so easy. Why didn't they simply get a new one, Amma? Two. Five years ago, a new found first cousin on my father's side tells me about a photograph in his family album. We're all in it, he says. Your parents and mine, my sister, me and you with your cute shining pate and no hair. You just come back from Tirupati, post tonsil. Must have been soon after your first birthday. I want to see that photograph. I don't want to see that photograph. I will never see that photograph. I am too busy burying the kernel of a father who has been absent loud and long these last 35 years. I have often wondered, ventures my cousin, what became of my baby cousin with her Tirupati tonsil head, but now I know. 3. I am leafing through an old album. My mother isn't home. The shock of a picture with one edge snipped off. There's only two of us, me and my mother. A tiny bit of someone's elbow. I know without being told whose. Four, I'm 10. My cousin is a year old. We are playing on the beach. My uncle produces a camera. I hurry into the frame. Greed again. Let me get one of Arvin first, my uncle says. I step aside. Afterwards, I refuse to have my picture taken. Five. My wedding. My mother, having raised me single-handedly, has hired a professional photographer. When the album arrives, we find she's not in any of the pictures. Six. It is sharp as an ice pick. I tell a politely puzzled friend over dinner. This desire for certain photographs. If you are not watchful, it can stab you through the heart. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a good rest of the year.